So before we get on to the first one, I really, really need you to be fully, fully aware of this. If you're someone that is on a carnival diet or you go on a carnival diet in the near future and you experiment with it, and it seems that you're doing everything right and you've researched it really well and you're experimenting with loads of things and it's not working for you, well, it might be, and it could probably be, that the diet isn't the thing that is causing your health issues and symptoms. So certain things that you may need to address is getting out of a job that you do not like, or even a relationship that's a very unhealthy relationship, not having a good sleep routine where you're going to bed early enough, being on electronic devices too much that produce a lot of EMS, or even having a wireless router for your internet very close to you, or even sleeping with your phone on next to your bed, or even near you, or under your pillows, or even on your body in your pockets, which if you actually look at the manuals of phones you buy, they actually say do not put your phone close to your body. It should be at least 20 centimeters away. And then you might have a lot of stressors going in your life. You may just be very unhappy with your life and just the direction that is going. So you really need to take a look at all areas of your life and see what other things may be preventing you from healing because the diet can only do so much. So just remember this, this is very, very important. So on to the first one. So you may have just got on the carnival diet and you're hoping and wishing that you're getting all of the health benefits straight away and resolving every different health issue that you have going on. So you may just be being impatient and not waiting long enough. Yes, you should start to feel good as soon as you go on the carnival diet, and a lot of health issues and symptoms should go very, very quickly, but some are gonna take a lot longer time period to resolve. So yes, just keep sticking to the diet, being consistent, switching up things that may be making the carnival diet not work as best as it possibly could to its full potential to heal you. And then, yeah, I'm gonna share with you in the next ones the reasons why the carnival diet may not be working for you so well. So, number two, it may be you are someone that has massive issues with histamines, especially if you're someone that's come from a plant-based vegan diet, because these diets and the foods contained within it are a full of histamines, which histamines are a plant toxin that is a defense mechanism that is in the plants is to stop you fully eating them so they die off completely and don't repopulate. So it's a brilliant survival mechanism that the plant has within them. But also, histamine is something that we do need within the body. It's a neurotransmitter. But when you're someone that has eaten so many histamine-rich foods for a very long time, the histamines from the foods that you've eaten will accumulate in an abundance within your body. So then if you switch to a carnival diet, and you're having things such as aged meats, or even minced meats, or even meats that aren't that fresh, the more that a meat is aged, or if it's been minced, or the longer it is left after it has been taken from the animal to be put within a shop for you to then buy it, the more histamines it is going to naturally create. So you're someone that has histamine issues, say, you want to be making sure that you avoid those types of meats that I've said and get the freshest meats that you can possibly get. And what you'll find is, after a period of time of eating the lowest histamine content meats for a period of time, your body is gonna keep removing all the histamines that are stored within your body and it will get to a point where you can start to reintroduce certain foods into your diet that do have more histamines in it and you don't react to it. And if you don't know about histamines, histamines actually induce inflammatory responses within the body and it also causes allergic reactions. And I recommend that you do your research on this subject because you can find out way more than what I've talked to you about in this video. And this is a massive issue for so many people that switch on to a carnivore diet. But for people like this, I normally find, and from what I've researched into people that have massive issues with this, if they normally stick to beef and have mostly steak, they don't seem to get any issues with 
a histamine response. Number three, you may be eating a lot, or you don't even have to eat a lot, should I say, but you may be eating consistently high puffer meat containing foods, which if you don't know what puffer is, it stands for polyunsaturated fatty acids. And meats that are very high in this are meats such as pork, fish, duck, turkey, the list just goes on and on and on. Do your research up online, find out which ones alongside the ones I've just mentioned are very high in puffers. And what you would want to do is remove them from your carnivore diet completely. Because there are a lot of people that get on with these, but then a lot of people don't. And if you do your research into this, I'll put a link down below to an article where Ray Pete, one of my main teachers that I've learned from from years and years and years, he talks about polyunsaturated fatty acids and negative effects as a whole, but it does mess up your hormone, production, it does cause inflammation within the body, and it does have a negative effect on your immune system, and it has a whole host of other negative effects as well. So yeah, if you're someone that's eating these types of meats on a regular basis, try removing them and stick to mostly lamb and beef, because they're some of the meats that have the lowest polyunsaturated fatty acid content. And what you need to be aware of is when you are getting animals from factory farm sources and their meat, they are fed foods that are very high in polyunsaturated fatty acids. And then what does that result in? It means that the meat that they are producing for you to eat is gonna be way higher in polyunsaturated fatty acids. And pork can literally be one of the worst for the polyunsaturated fatty acid content, especially when it's coming from factory farmed sources. And actually a little side note add on to the first two things is that pork and chicken can contain a lot of different allergens, especially when it comes from factory farm sources. So this is why a lot of people do not get on with it as well. So if you're someone that's eating these, try removing them completely. Stick to only beef and or lamb. See how you get on with that and just listen to your body and stick to the foods that make you feel the best on the carnivore diet. Number four, which is a really, really simple one. Everyone's gonna understand this very, very easily. You may be overeating or under eating, which some people are gonna get very confused with this. How am I gonna know if I'm overeating or under eating? Well, if you wanna know if you're overeating, you're just gonna feel very heavy afterwards. And when you're eating, you're just forcing yourself to eat past the point of satiation. So that's just a really good telltale sign. And if you're someone that's under eating, you may be feeling hungry throughout the day. You may have low energy throughout the day. So just experiment. If you think you're overeating, try eating less within the day and less meat, see if you feel better. But if you think you're under eating, then try eating more. Just experiment and listen to your body again and see if either one of these things work for you. And this could be a very, very quick, easy fix for a lot of people that have either one of these things going on. And number five, and this can change over a period of time. So when I got on a carnivore diet, I was trying to eat as much fat as I possibly could whilst eating any meal on the carnivore diet, which that felt very good for me to do for quite a long period of time. But after quite a while, it actually started to have a negative effect to me and not make me feel so good holistically. So this, like I said, can change over a period of time. It seemed that I needed a lot more fat at first, but then after a period of time, I actually do better now on way, way higher protein and a lot lower fat. And I know people that throughout the year when they've been on a carnivore diet, sometimes they feel better on higher fat, sometimes on higher protein and lower fat. So just keep your mind open and know that you are not static at all. You're dynamic, you're forever changing and evolving in every different way. There's always different seasons which can change things for us as well. So be willing to switch up and experiment with these different macronutrient ratios and having more of one or another at any one given point. And I actually have found with so many people that I speak to that have been on a carnival diet long term, they normally tend to find that over a long period of time after being on a carnival diet that they actually do way better on way higher protein and a lot lower fat. If you wanna know a macronutrient ratio, normally around 90% of their calories coming from protein and only 10% of their calories coming from fat. Number six, consuming too much salt, which a lot of the carnivore people out there and also the keto people out there will tell you, if you're not feeling good on these diets, you just need to consume 
a lot more salt, up to 10 grams of salt a day, which when I used to be on a keto diet, I listened to this, I did this on a carnivore diet as well, and guess what happened? Every time I did this, it would destroy my energy levels and not make me feel good holistically. I actually feel the best when I'm having a way lower salt intake. So if you're someone like me, where I was on a carnivore diet where I started having more and more salt because I felt naturally drawn to and a lot of people were saying that that's a good thing to do, and you're not feeling good, just try having no salt or a very small amount of salt for a period of time and see if that makes you feel any better. And the reason why it could be doing this is because it can throw other electrolytes out of balance, such as potassium and magnesium. Number seven, and this is a really quick, easy fix, you may not be drinking enough water. You may be someone that in the past has been used to eating a vegan diet, which has a lot of high water content foods within it. So then when you switch to a carnivore diet, you could end up not drinking enough water and try and drink the amount of water that you used to on a vegan diet, which you're actually gonna need way more because obviously the foods on a carnivore diet, especially if you're eating just meat, don't have nowhere near as much water content as plant foods, for example, especially when it comes to things such as fruits. And I found for me, if I wasn't hydrated at any point on the carnivore diet, and then I ate a carnivore meal full of a lot of meat, it would make me feel very sleepy for hours and hours afterwards. You may get some other different negative effects. We're all different, so we all get different negative effects from different things, but this is my own experience. And then the simple solution was just make sure that I'm well hydrated well before I eat any high meat meals. Number eight, if you're someone that has come from a diet where you've been malnourished for a very long time and you have severe long-term deficiencies, just eating muscle meat may not be able to give you the amount of different micronutrients that you need in abundance that you've been lacking for a very long time, especially if you came off a malnourishing, unsustainable vegan diet. So you may be someone when you're in this situation that needs some other different foods that you're not eating on the carnival diet. And it would be more specifically organ meats because organ meats such as liver are some of the most nutrient rich powerhouse foods in the world. And yes, a lot of people can get grossed out by eating this, but you just need to man up and stop whining and complaining and just experiment with it. Liver is definitely one of the best things that you can consume. And if you want me to make a video showing how you can easily eat it without even chewing it, so you can get it down without any issues, because I know it grosses out a lot of people, let me know down below and I'll make that video for you as soon as possible. So these are basically nature's supplement rather than synthetic supplements out there. But if you're someone that really finds it too gross and too yucky to eat organ meats, which I can understand, especially for someone that's never really ate them in your life, and you're not used to them in any way whatsoever, then you could take an ancestral supplement, which are pasture-raised, antibiotic-free, hormone-free organs from cows that are put into a supplementation form. So the inside capsules in a pot that you can buy. If you're interested in them, I put a discount code down below that give you 10% off and a link to their website as well. And these are brilliant, especially for children that you may want to give organs, which they can definitely be a lot harder to get them to eat organ meats in their whole form. So supplements can be a good alternative. And then number nine would be eating factory farmed meats. Yes, there is a lot of people on a carnival diet that are pro eating factory farm animals and they feel very good from eating them. But as I mentioned earlier on, when they are fed things such as corn, soy and grains, which if you're someone that's on a carnival diet, Ask yourself, would you put those into your body? Would you eat them? So why would you eat animals that eat it? It doesn't make any sense in any way, shape or form. It's gonna make them have way more polyunsaturated fatty acid content within them. It's also gonna make their meat have way more omega-6 and way less omega-3. 
It also can make it so the meat can induce more of an allergic reaction within you if you're someone that has issue with histamines and other different allergens that can be found within factory farmed meats, especially pork and chicken. And then you've got things such as bovine growth hormone that gets injected within cows. And that has been proven through a lot of research to cause a lot of negative effects in people. So to be honest, I don't think you really want to be putting that in your body. And then when they're injecting with hormones, that's not good to put within your body. And then all the other things that they're doing to factory farm animals, it's just not making them the healthiest in any way, shape or form. So if you're someone that's eating a lot of factory farmed meats or all factory farm meats, do your best to only eat pasture raised animal foods that are antibiotic free and hormone free, which that is what I have done from day one of switching to a carnivore diet and eating a high meat diet with so many different animal foods, including raw milk and raw butter and eggs. So if you're someone that's never experimented with this, give it a go because I have pretty much found anyone that has switched to a carnivore diet from a vegan diet and they've eaten only pasture raised animal food sources they seem to get a lot more greater benefits and have less issues with switching onto a carnivore diet and last but not least number 10 and that is you may be just overcooking your meat. I've done this at certain points whilst being on a carnivore diet in the past, and guess what? It has a negative effect on my digestion and elimination. It takes a lot longer for the food to be digested, and it caused issues for me such as constipation. I actually made a video talking about all the different reasons as to why you may have constipation on a carnivore diet. If you haven't seen that video, I put a link for it up above so you can learn about all the different reasons as to why that may be going on for you on a carnivore diet if that is happening to you. So with this, if you think this is an issue going on for you and you can just look at the meat you're cooking, if you're cooking it a lot and it's a very hard and just more rubbery and very difficult to chew and takes a long time to break down with your teeth, then it's a very clear sign you're overcooking it. The less that you cook it, the more easily it's gonna be digested, assimilated, and eliminated. It's very, very simple. So experiment with this and see if actually cooking your meat actually makes you feel a lot better on the carnivore diet. Because if it's really messing up your digestion, that's really not good. You don't want any food taking a long time to go through your digestive system and not be assimilated fully because then you're not gonna get the full hidden benefits from it and it could actually induce some negative effects in you holistically. So that's it from me and this video. If you want me to make any more videos on the carnivore diet, let me know down below. Don't forget to leave your comments and questions down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And make sure that you do subscribe. Otherwise, you're gonna miss out on loads of other amazing videos. Yes, don't hesitate. Make sure you click it, do it now. Click the subscribe button, click the bell notification button. Thank you very much for doing that. So, yeah, as always, Enjoy the rest of your day, make the most of it and catch you on the flip side and don't forget to check out these videos which may interest you as well. So yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.